Take my so, glasses. What's up? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You know, just out here, just you know, I don't know, just trying to get to it. You? Right. Oh God. Yeah. It's definitely hell what I'm Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah, you know it, you know it. Here we are. Okay. I've never done nothing like this before. Yeah, I know, right? Eyes. I know. <laughs> but I'm okay. always TV. Okay. So. That's what's up. <laughs> okay. Hey, look, as you're supposed to be, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. All right? Right, right. Of course. So, yeah. I mean, I'm Hell excited yeah. to be So, <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So, before we get into the whole podcast and everything, I just want to let you know, the way how I actually came across you was on World Star, right? I see, really? I seen you on World Star. I think it said like, yeah, it said like wheelchair bay, and I was like, you know what, man, let me try to get her on a podcast because I seen your TikTok at the bottom. So I was like, let me. So I don't really be on TikTok like that, but I was like, man, let me get on TikTok real fast, and you know, let me ask her real fast, and hopefully she'll say yeah. And that's how you end up reaching back out to me on Instagram because I think I followed you on Instagram. I don't know if I had wrote you or not, but. I think you had. Yeah, you had followed me, and, me like, and I had seen like you and your wife long ago, like months ago. So okay, that was that was crazy that that you popped back up in that way. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. But that's what's up, though. That just shows you how small right. the world is, though. For real, for real. Right. Like <laughs> I know. yeah, yeah. So, but that's what's up. It's good to see you on World Star. It's good to see you out there doing things, reaching out because I know we, I know we talk with you know some of the same people. So. This community yeah. is small, but it's you know it's getting big, you know, and it is like oh, man. I'm before I was in a wheelchair, I had never seen mm -hmm. you know people yeah. in a wheelchair like yeah, you know, exactly, exactly. Maybe once or twice, but nothing, mm -hmm. nothing like how I'm seeing now. So I yeah. guess when you just kind of open your eyes to more, you see more. Mm, exactly, exactly, yeah, exactly. So before we get into your whole story. You know, we want to get to know you a little bit better. How was your life like before your incident? Like, you know, like what were some of the hobbies that you had? You know, tell us some interesting things about you. You know, just, you know, just tell us about you. Okay. So pre-accident, Jessica was different to say okay. the least. Like, I was just like going out, of course, mm -hmm. like. Taking trips, having fun, didn't have any real direction, any real goals, mm -hmm. just living life, literally, or whatever that meant at that point, you know, yeah. like, just just enjoying it, but not really enjoying it, not fulfilled at all, but just yeah. doing the things that are supposed to fulfill you, are supposed to be fun, or, you know, supposed to be, um, I don't know, just whatever, mm -hmm. and... But even while I was doing that, you know, premarital sex mm -hmm. and just uh, just indulging into all those different things, yeah. like my mind was always racing. Like my mind was never satisfied with the lifestyle. It was just comfortable, you know. Mm -hmm. I feel you. I feel you. Trust me. So, yeah. Do you feel like I'm gonna that get you too deep on the first question? <laughs> no, no, no. You good? You good? Do you feel like at any point that you kind of took life for granted before your uh, before your incident? Oh, of course, of course. Like mm -hmm. you don't, know, you 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 just don't think it will be you. Exactly. You know? like, exactly. Still, still, like even still today, it's been almost what I don't know, almost four years, mm -hmm. and it's still like I'm in it, but like yeah. it's like I don't know, like it's just still it, it still mm -hmm. takes getting used to. Exactly. But I'm definitely um, smelling the roses now mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure, like. I'm appreciative of everything because you just, when you don't have something, of course you're going to appreciate it. Like, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So, but even deeper than that, like, just appreciating it before it's taken, you know? Exactly. And just really understanding that the the little things are really the biggest, the biggest things. Yep. And, exactly. and not to take advantage or, or you know, yeah. anything like that. Trust me, I definitely understand. You know, we don't really realize how, how big just getting up and going to the bathroom is. You know, until you can't just get up and go to the bathroom, you know. Until you can't just get yeah. up and go. <laughs> you know, you know, for us it's a little bit different, you know. But just, just really thinking about it, like I realized after I got in a wheelchair how much I really took life for granted. You know, I was really just ungrateful for the things that I had, and I just didn't really realize it until I lost mostly all of it. You know, but, yeah. But yeah. you know, and, my life, um, yeah. 
was you finna say? I was just gonna say that my life, I bounced back, but it took a while, you know. But I eventually bounced back, and you know, you you realize that your life isn't over. All right, you you might think like that at right. first, but it's it's really not. It's really not. Okay, I if I I can have one just uh just a question to come off that what yeah, you said yeah like like do you do you feel like when you say you bounce back like what you like did you you bounce back like what like what do you mean like mentally or just physically or just like the whole thing a whole three sixty like well I would just say I bounce back all together like mentally physically everything like how long how ooh, damn okay let me see. Well, I was in, I ain't gonna lie, I was in that sunken place for a little bit, but I wasn't, but it wasn't really due to my paralysis, it was due to the relationship that I was in at the time. So I don't really feel like, mm, I don't, okay. I don't really feel like I was ever, like, I don't really feel like I was ever really depressed over me being in a wheelchair, because I was just so happy <laughs> to be alive. You know, like, okay. once I hear yeah. like the little things that they tell you that, oh man, like, they told your mom that you won't gonna make it. You know, just just yeah. just hearing that, just Thanks. yeah, I, I I don't really care if I'm in a wheelchair because it's some people that that don't even get shot that they end up dying. You know, they get shot one time, they end up dying. Just just like little stuff like that. You know, you just really be appreciative of just the fact that you even just still here. You know, and that's yeah. one thing that it took me a little while to realize it, but once I actually realized it, that really helped me just get my life together and really just really get up out the bed. Cause I really didn't. I didn't want to yeah. leave the house. I didn't want to do nothing. People want to come over the house. You know, my friends, females. Mm-hmm. I I told everybody, nah. Like, like, no. It was like, no, no, no. Yeah. Was, until people really just was like, nah, bro. We about to pull up on you. And it wasn't nothing I could right. really do at that time. I, I, bro. Yeah. You, like, like they know where I live at. They pulled up on me and right, know, yeah, and just like a little bit, like, like, like piece by piece. I just started really just going out, just doing like little things. But I would say it took me around like. Let me see. It took me two years to really get the gist of everything that I actually had to do. But I would say to the point where I really felt like I bounced back, it was about like three years. About like three years. Yeah. About like three years. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because, you know, like you be mad at everybody for a little bit, you know, like everybody's trying to help you out and you just mad at everybody. Right. You're not understanding. Yeah. (laughs) You know, and you're walking. Like, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. They, yeah. they they really don't understand, but at the same time, you know that's your they support really, system. They do though. They yeah, really, they, they do. don't, but they, they do in other in other ways. Like everybody mm-hmm. got their own thing, so it's like yeah, it ain't yeah. that specific thing. But I can kind of relate mm-hmm. to the feeling of you know mm-hmm. losing something. Yeah, exactly. And you know, I really didn't realize it for the longest time. You know, I thought I felt like I was just going through something, but it, in reality, it's not just you; it's your family yeah. too. You it's know? your family too. Like they gotta readjust just like you. You know exactly. Man, I swear to God, I was so mad, just mad, just mm-hmm. like mad that everybody was so just cool and trying to be understanding and just yeah. like no, I'm irritated. I can't walk. Like you know, like mm-hmm. yeah, you know. But that was that was many. That was exactly that was ago. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, how old was yeah. you when you got paralyzed? It's so crazy because I don't even know when I was top boy. I was 22. I had just turned 22 about a month earlier. That's crazy. Me yeah, because I was coming. Yeah, yeah, I was 22. That's crazy. Okay. Okay, so we was around the same age. I, I literally just turned 22. So uh, I got paralyzed like a month later. I like Almost a month later to the day, actually. What, what was your date? September 27th. My birthday, August 31st. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 So you twenty six now? I'm a I'm about to be twenty six in May. Okay. Okay. All right then. Mm-hmm. All right. That's what's up. That's what's I'm up. Twenty five right now. Okay. Okay. Look, I ain't gonna lie. To, look, <laughs> they coming. <laughs> Them birthdays they coming. Ah, so. And that is like the least of what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. But yeah. Okay. So before we get into your incident, you know, how was your day going that day? And it was a good day. Mm. Oh my God. It was such a good day. And probably for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. But even still, like it was just it was a summer day. It was summer. I was home from college. Okay. So it was just like it was a it was a good day. Like it was a beautiful day. It was like 80 degrees. It was hot out. 
Mm-hmm. But you know, I ain't have no, I ain't have no uh, responsibilities. Mm-hmm. I'm just out here kicking it, like mm-hmm. for real. Mm-hmm. And it was like the first. I grew up in a very strict home, okay. So it was kind of like the first year that my parents just like let go. Like she in college, mm-hmm. you know, just let her go, James. Yeah. You know? Okay. But so after that, yeah, it was, it was, it was up. But it was a good day. It was, it was a, a very day. good day. Okay. Okay. So you said you was in college. What were you uh, studying for? At the time, I was going to Prairie View a and University, and I was studying to become a doctor. I was mm. a biology major and a chemistry minor. Okay. Okay. I wanted to go into pediatric, uh, to be a pediatric doctor. Okay. You can still do it that now. Was the, that was the goal. You can still do it now. No. Oh, but life changed. So, Ooh, okay. you know, things okay. kind of, okay. purpose okay. got okay. revealed and passions mm. came. So. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. Then we'll now get to that. I doing this thing in a major way. Okay. Yeah. Hey, hey look, you right about that. You right about that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So before your incident, did you know anybody that was in a wheelchair? Not one. Not one? No family members, no... I didn't even have, like, an older family member that, like, couldn't walk a little bit, so they were, like, you know, halfway, halfway. Mm -hmm. None of that, like... I think my papa, did he? No, not a wheelchair. Okay. He had a walker. Okay. (laughs) Okay, so... so... I can't remember nobody in a wheelchair. Okay. Ooh, I take that back. This dude I went to school with in junior high named Harrison, he Mm -hmm. was a real big guy. He was in a... He was in a wheelchair, but he used to walk with his feet. In mm-hmm. the wheelchair, so that don't really count. You know what? I, mean, I be feeling the same way. I be feeling the same way sometimes. Like <laughs> I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say no days, but I be feeling that way. I, I do, I do, <laughs> I do. Okay. But no, he, he really, no, he can walk for real. Like he, okay. that was just like a momentary thing. But that was mm-hmm. the only person that I had visually seen. You know, okay. in the wheelchair. Okay. Okay. Now, before your incident. What was your like general conception of people in a wheelchair? Like, how did you really feel about them? Because I know for me, I I would say, I, not that I really thought bad of them, but I don't, like I don't know. Like, I guess I was just stereotyping them all type all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, but but at the same time, I only really knew. I only really went off of what I saw, you know. Because my uncle he ended right. up, he ended up getting paralyzed when I was a kid, I believe. So I, that's all I really knew. Like, you know, I didn't really go around him a lot, but I, I went around him and, you know, like when I went around him, I just seen things that, oh, I was just like, oh, that's what it is when you're in a wheelchair, you know? And yeah. Oh no. I see. I never had a close proximity of anybody mm-hmm. in a wheelchair. So I had like my thoughts of people in a wheelchair were like nothing. Like, nothing? Okay. I, I didn't have a thought. Like, I didn't, okay. I like, I darn it didn't know they existed. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like, I know they was out there, but I, yeah. I feel like it was only for old people that, that you know, back issues or, yep. like, never thought about, like, paralysis. I mm-hmm. never thought. I didn't even know how paralysis worked. Mm-hmm. Like, even when I became paralyzed, I thought I was going to go to the hospital and be out in six weeks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Walk. That's so, crazy. Okay. I just had no, I was ignorant. I was ignorant to their world. Yeah, me too. Me too. Me too. And I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's something that you should know, but it's it's definitely something that you should kind of be aware of, you know, because it's not really something that you aware. ever think about. Aware. A- aware is the thing. Aware. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just so you not like, it's the alien, like, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Go exactly. out and put yeah. And I, yeah. and I and feel like that that's how you look at people in wheelchairs. Like, b- before you get into a wheelchair or, you know, Anybody that's walking, you kind of really do look at people in wheelchairs as aliens, kind of. You do. Yeah. You do. Like, yeah. It's yeah. like, we got, you got to look like you got, you like, I don't know. Like, it's just something. Like, mm-hmm. And I guess as I'm in a wheelchair, I'm like, what you looking at? But we, when I was probably not in one, I would be doing the same thing. So exactly. you can't be, you know. Exactly. Maybe mad. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I feel the same way. And But, I mean, it don't really... It don't really bother me when when I would say grown ups look at me, but it really bothered me when kids look at me because you know they mind it's is the really kids. It's yes. Like, they don't and they will not leave your sight. Like nope. literally. Bro, and like, they ain't got no filter either. And you're, <laughs> and you can look back at them too. Yes. Like and they feel like Yeah, exactly. And look, look, they'll <laughs> ask yeah. you whatever on their mind. They'll ask you anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> they my kids, I'm a teacher. Okay. okay well, I, I don't know if you're gonna ask me, but I'm a I'm a school teacher, right? So okay. 
my kids ask me like what happened to your leg like miss mm-hmm. Thomas, why you can't get up and do this like okay. they always ask me crazy questions so it's like if you don't have no security about yourself mm-hmm. you'll be letting a five six year old get to you like <laughs> exactly hey look and they yeah. do they do <laughs> They do. <laughs> they do because they ask the questions that nobody would ask. Like exactly, exactly. For you know, when I first got in the wheelchair, my little cousin, yo, she would just she would just ask the wildest questions, and I'm telling you, she would get up in my head. Yo, it was like she would ask something. It, that, it, they get in your head. Yes, yes, they do. <laughs> they it's, really it's do. It's almost kind of like it's kind of crazy to even admit that, like a yeah. little kid, but it's just like. What they're saying is true, so it's not necessarily mm-hmm. the kid. It's the it's the yeah it's the fact. Like you know, yeah. like damn, okay, exactly. you're right. Like I can't get up. Like mm-hmm. exactly. And I ain't gonna lie, man. Like they be asking some some off the wall questions because at the time, at the time it was around like I would say like maybe like the first year into my paralysis, and she like me and her, we always just really got into it. But 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 like this is my little cousin though. But she just had like the little smartest mouth ever though. But I, but look, I ain't gonna lie. Look, I look, 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 look. I love her. I look, I love her now. Like like we hella of course, close. Of me, me and her are hella close now. But at the time, like she she came at me and like she she looked at me. I looked at her and she she asked me. She was like, "Why do you look constipated?" And at the time, I was constipated. And I was just I can't believe she just oh. said this. I'm like, yo. <laughs> But like she was automatically in my head at that moment right there. It was like it was nothing I could like, do. You're in my head, like it's not even about you anymore. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. So you say you was a yeah. teacher. What grade you teach? So okay, so so I go into schools. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm at a I'm, I'm stationed at a school, mm-hmm. and I bring kids up to their speed. Okay. Okay. So if I have like a first grader that's on a pre-K level or mm-hmm. second grader that's on a first grade level, I um I bridge that gap. Okay. So I don't work with just one grade level. I kind of work with Most you know, whomever they need. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And what's the highest grade level that you uh would say that you teach at? Uh, or like bring I, up to speed. I I tutored, I tutored like ninth graders. Okay. And. 10th graders, but taught second grade. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. That's, you know, it's actually a beautiful thing to see that you, you know, only four years into your paralysis that you out here teaching, you know, doing something like that. That's, that's, yeah, that's y'all major right there. Not, that's major. Yeah, God built me for this, for real. I was doing stuff way sooner than I probably should have been doing stuff, mm-hmm. but it was all this, man. Tr- look, trust me. I, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Okay. So, <laughs> so getting into your incident, take me to like 10 minutes before things were down. What was that scene like? Like, like what was going on at that moment? 10 minutes before? 10 minutes before. Le- leading all the way up into your incident. Man. Okay. Ooh. I don't, okay. It's probably not even necessary for me to be that honest. Like... <laughs> Hey, look. Hey, look. You can be honest uh, you want to. It, look, it, look, it's cool. Okay, it's yo, cool. I'm going to leave that part out. It's I'm cool. I'm going to leave that part out. But no, nah, like 10 minutes before my accident, because um, I was actually with a friend. Okay. I was with a, I was with a, a, a guy friend mm-hmm. at the time that I was communicating with. I'm not going to. We weren't in a relationship. We were just, mm-hmm. you know, really good friends. Okay. Or whatever the case may be. And, um... Yeah, we had left, I think, getting some gas when we were about to go to the mall. So we had just gotten in the car. I hadn't been in the car, but only six minutes. Okay. You know, the incident happened probably about five minutes up from my house, five, six minutes up from my house. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, he was asleep. I was driving. Shit, I was chilling. Like, mm-hmm. I wasn't speeding. The music okay. was cool. The vibes was right. Me and mm-hmm. him always had a very copacetic relationship. So, you know, we always had good vibes, good energy. Like mm-hmm. I said, he was asleep. We was on our way to get um some gifts for okay. our dads for uh, Father's Day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now, the moment everything happened, what's that like? like what's going on? Like, take this Oh, no. I feel like I got to add. I, I feel like I got to add this in here because it's kind of like... Okay. Okay. So before we went like to this particular outlet, it's like a closer one, like right up the street, you know, that mm-hmm. everybody go to called Uptown. Okay. And when I pulled up, 
when he was like, I want to go to the mall so we can get our dad some gifts. I was like, okay, cool. We go to Uptown. I guess maybe he didn't hear me say we're going to Uptown because when I pulled up, he was like, mm-hmm. why are we in Uptown? Because Uptown is kind of like your, your more smaller uh, outlet. Okay. So I feel like, you know, I guess he felt like we wasn't going to have much of a, uh, like options at the outlet. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, so we went back and forth with it for like two seconds. And I was like, okay, whatever. I, I go on and drive to Grand Prairie. But Grand Prairie was farther. So okay. I really was kind of like, ugh, the butt. I didn't care because I was with him. We was cool. Yeah. So I was like, whatever. You you sleep, I'll drive. And you know what I'm saying? We'll be there in 15, 20 minutes. And I mm-hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. So. So you on your way to Uptown, which is like a certain outlet. I'm on but my then... way to. You good? You good? Okay, so you said you was on your way no, to you... Uptown, and then you switched it to go to a different outlet, correct? Right. Okay, mm-hmm. so let me see. Let me see. I won't put this. Um... Okay, so the moment of your incident, what happened? It was like, it wasn't even like the moment. It was like kind of like 10 seconds or probably like... 10 seconds? Okay. Yeah, like, like seven seconds before the moment. Like, so I'm driving, right? And I had not went through like... And it's a chill. I'm not even on the main road. Like, I'm on... Mm-hmm. I'm on like a back highway. Like... Okay. Not even a service, not even a service road. Like, I'm on a back highway. Like, I'm in between mm-hmm. neighborhoods and stuff. Like, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, going to 1382. So, I'm driving. I'm chilling. And I see the car coming, like I see it coming, but it's just like it's not it's not registering to me like what to do. Like you it's just like I'm gonna yeah. get hit. You know what I'm saying? I, I knew mm-hmm. I was gonna get hit. So my initial reaction was, okay, swerve, because you know that they, they're coming at me and I'm going this way. Yeah. You know what I'm okay. saying? My I'm on this side, my passenger, and then you have the opposing car coming coming towards mm-hmm. me. So I swerve. And but it's mm-hmm. oncoming traffic coming on the other side. Yeah. So I get hit by oncoming traffic and now my car mm-hmm. is, is spinning. And so I done lost mm-hmm. control now. I'm trying to wake him up. You know, I'm, I'm calling his name mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be. And he's not responding. I'm screaming. And we get hit by another a truck, by a red truck. Mm. And after we got hit by the red truck, I opened my eyes and I was on pavement. Oh. Okay. And he was under the red truck. Over there, yeah. unconscious. And I was just sitting there, like, my wig had flew off. Mm-hmm. Um, Obviously, that wasn't important at the time. <laughs> I know. And I, know. I was you just... Be, you I was just be thinking about um, little stuff like that. Right. Like, now I just think back, like, oof, my wig was off. But, um, yeah, my wig was off. I, I, I opened my eyes. I'm on high pavement. I don't know how I got there. Like, mm-hmm. how? How did I... Like, how did I get there? But, like I said, I'm on the... I'm on the pavement, my car over there somewhere. Yeah. And um, like I'm holding myself up like this, right? Mm-hmm. You know how they do the pressure release or whatever they used mm-hmm. to tell you do in the rehab. So I'm yeah. holding myself up like this. Because I like every time I like step down, it was like ex- like it's like somebody just kept running me over. Mm. Like, so I had to sit like this until the paramedics or yeah. whomever came. Cause I feel mm-hmm. like I was just still in the accident. Like literally my body was on fire. Yeah. And so I'm screaming, I'm crying, I'm telling people, shoot me. It's like people coming out now, like, you know, talking to me and trying to mm-hmm. feed me water, whatever the case may be. And it registers to me, like, because I have a, it's like a white guy there, I think now. And he's, he, he's like trying to give me like the little water or whatever. And mm-hmm. it's registering to me, like, that my feet are not moving, like, that my legs are not moving. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'm trying to move them, like, you know, I'm like, okay, you know, maybe it's just the opposite. But it's so much going on, like it's just you know what I'm saying. It's just like yeah. so much going on. I'm really, I'm really in my mental now, like okay. But I'm still going haywire because I'm I'm in so much pain, and it's just like if anybody knows me, they know I am. I have a low tolerance for pain, so that was yeah. like the worst pain I had ever experienced. So by the time the paramedics um, pulled up, they rushed over there with the little board or whatever to put you in. Mm-hmm. A guy rushed over there with the little board to put me on, and. The first thing he said was, oh, I'm like, what the hell? What, what like, what old mean? Like, what you mm-hmm. back there looking at? Like, you know, he was like, yeah. oh. 
And so like six more six more of them had came on and he was like, Okay, we can't lift it like this. We can't like they just talking, chattering in the back and I'm just hearing like mm-hmm. like what's going on? They talking about like your 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 spine is, is, is in your rib cage. And I'm just like, Okay, mm. like like they telling each other that, but yeah. like I'm obviously I'm hearing it. So I'm just like mm-hmm. I ain't registered none of that yet. Like that's just yeah. I'm just hearing that in the back mm. in the disaroar. So and um after they finally like carefully placed me down because I guess all of that had to matter uh, mm-hmm. for something. Um, they put me in the thing and I just went blank. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. my mind shut down. Like, everything just went just went silent. Like, I was cold. Like, I was in a casket almost. Like, mm-hmm. my eyes wasn't closed. I wasn't, I wasn't crying. I wasn't nothing. Like, I was just laying there. And then when I arrived at the hospital and everybody's just running and doing this and that. I see uh, my oldest brother uh, coming down the hall. Like, you know, I guess they had them called or I don't know how he got there so fast, but mm-hmm. he, he touched me and I looked up and I didn't even say nothing. I didn't think nothing. Like I didn't want nobody. I wasn't happy. I wasn't sad. I wasn't mad. I was just like, just like, what's going on? <laughs> I don't That's think amazing. I was in pain at that point. They probably had injected me with something. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, so do you do you know how long it took for the ambulance to get there? I don't even know. Did it feel like forever? I don't know. Tom, Tom it seemed like time was going by so slow because I was holding myself up and the pavement yeah. was so hot. It was so hot. Like, it was, remember I told you it was a hot day. Yeah. So, it was just like, yeah, it, that was the longest five minutes. It probably, they probably was their fast, but it was yeah. the longest, quickest, whatever. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Damn. Okay. Okay, so, while you sitting on the pavement, is it hard to breathe at that time? Because I know you said that the paramedic said that your spine was in your ribs. So, was it hard to breathe at all? Mm-mm. I was breathing fine. Yeah. Okay. I was breathing fine. I was breathing enough to be yelling and crying and doing all of that mm-hmm. stuff. No, okay. I, I think I was breathing pretty fine. Okay. Okay, now... Uh, it's, that's just kind of tough because I know for me, for me, uh, like, I had, like, some broken ribs, so it was... And my lung head got hit once I... Once, once a bullet just traveled, but I know, like, that whole rib situation is, it's damn, it's damn near impossible to breathe. Like, yeah, no, nah, oh. yeah. So that's yeah. why I really asked that question because I know for me, like anything with the ribs, it's just like they, like they just so like it's just so tender that like, everything hurts. So, tender, yeah, yeah. So okay, okay. So the moment I, that you, were, I mean, oh, sorry about that. No, I can't, can't remember. Like, could I breathe? I think I could breathe. Like, I think I could breathe fine. It's probably so much stuff going on in your head that you really, you probably can't right. I really can't remember. Like, I yeah, can't, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I know, like, I had pain, but the fact that I couldn't breathe really just overshadowed all the pain. Like, I'm telling you, like, yeah. once I realized what happened, it was like, 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 it was so much pain that I could really feel, but the fact that I couldn't breathe just blocked that all out. It was like, nah, bro, like, yeah. I, I can't it breathe. Yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah. Ex- exactly. So, so yeah. okay. So, the moment you get to the hospital, what is everybody saying? Like, what is the doctor saying? Like, are they talking to you or are they getting you ready for surgery? Like, what's going on at that moment? Mm-hmm. It's immediate. Like, they mm-hmm. they rush me. Like, they rush me. Like, I come in. Like I said, I see my brother. He tapped me. I looked up. And I'm just mm-hmm. still, like, plastered to the ceiling. And um, they, they rushed me to get CAT scans. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did an MRI while I was getting my scans. They asked me um, for the chaplain came in and asked me, you know, to give them. Do I have a point of, you know, a parent to call or a friend or mm-hmm. whomever give them a, a number? And I guess um, they went and called my mom, and that was it. And that's and then when I woke up, I was, you know, pre- mm-hmm. after surgery, post surgery. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the moment that you go into your CAT scans and then you go into surgery, how? How much longer after that does it take for you to actually wake up? Or did you wake up like a few days later, a day later? I 
don't know. I don't you like. Don't I guess I should have had somebody tell me this story because mm. all I remember is just waking up like it could have been the next day or it could have been that night. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. You see, and. And for me, that's something that I had to piece together through, like, you know, my parents, my mom, my dad, my sister, you know, because honestly, for me, it felt like I was only asleep for about five minutes, but I ain't wake up till like three weeks later, you know? So, it, you know, oh, really? yeah, because they put me in a induced coma because of all the pain. So, you know, like I had, I had chest tubes. And you know, I don't know. I'm not going to even say that happened. No, because I had... It had to been. It had to been the next day. I think. I. I think after surgery, like I woke up, like okay, the next day, like yeah, because okay. I. I remember. I remember um the date, like you know, it was. Mm-hmm. I think it was the next day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So the moment that you wake up, what's that scene like? Is your parents there? What's going everybody, on? Everybody. Right everybody. Well, they tell me everybody's there, but. Um, only, I think only my brother came in. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, it's like, did I take this out of my memory or something? Like, cause mm-hmm. I don't remember. Like, <laughs> I know my mom and my dad was there, but mm-hmm. other than them two and my brothers, I think those were like the four people that I seen. Or that's the, uh, them the only people I remember. Okay. And I could be making that up just cause mm-hmm. I know they typically are there. <laughs> okay. But I don't. Mm-hmm. Are you in pain at that moment? Uh, yeah, I'm in pain, but honestly, I'm so zoned out. Mm-hmm. I'm not in nothing. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm not in nothing. I mean, like this foreign world. Like, I hear stuff, but I'm I'm zoned. Like, I'm so zoned out. Like, yeah, that's understandable. Yeah. Probably just all the medication, everything, you know. So. Even no, nah, I'm saying even when I wasn't on medication, like mm-hmm. my like my mind, like it just I couldn't understand. Like I just was like, I guess because I just like I said I was so unaware of yeah. paralysis and, and, and paraplegia. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't know that. Okay, I'm thinking like the swelling goes down and then you're exactly. fine. Like I had surgery, it was mm-hmm. sex, it was successful, or whatever the case may be. Like mm-hmm. so, I really was just like just there trying to see what the, what the next move was like, or yeah. is it the next move? Or, mm-hmm. And nobody was really saying, really saying nothing. Yeah. Same, same. See, for me, I didn't realize Well, I realized that I couldn't move my legs right when I woke up. But once they kept just doing like little things down there, I was like, why can't I feel it? And it was on me to really just put two and two together. Like, all right, I can't move my legs. Right, because after so long, like you can't tell me that the swelling is still it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, so, so the doctors never tell you that you that you can't walk or nothing like that. No, my doctors, my doctors, like they left that to the rehab people mm. <laughs> to kind of explain more of mm-hmm. that I feel, or maybe they explained it to my parents and then they just didn't tell me. Yeah, but I don't, I don't ever remember hearing that p word. Ever like mm-hmm. all I heard me, me was either. just focus on you know what I'm saying getting better and we are gonna see when the swelling goes down mm-hmm. you know you still got eight weeks of rehab so we're not gonna like that's what I was hearing. Mm-hmm. They just giving you hope the whole time. Really, really, really looking back on it, I feel like it was kind of like false hope because you know it was that, oh it's definitely false hope. Uh huh. Because like for me. You know, like they tell you, oh man, like things gonna get better in rehab. And in reality, like looking back on it, they do, but they don't really get better to what you thinking at that moment. Like, okay, things gonna get better in rehab. I'm gonna walk again. You know, like that's what you right. thinking. That's, that's my get better. Not yeah. not you teaching me how to transfer. Yeah, that's not yeah. the better that I was talking about. Exactly. Yeah, so. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so whatever happened to the guy that you was with? Uh, the guy that I was with, okay, boom. So mind you, at the scene he was unconscious, and mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't even know he was unconscious because um, I just didn't know like where he was. Like yeah. then people were saying that he was under the car. So like, I mean, I was, I was telling people, um, 
no, I take that back. I knew he was under that car, but obviously I couldn't get to him. Yeah. So I had to wait till people like start coming up and I was telling them like, mm -hmm. I was like my husband under the car, even though it wasn't my husband at the mm -hmm. time. Like, but I wanted them to relay like the medical, you mm -hmm. know, uh, prognosis or whatever to make sure that he was okay back to mm -hmm. me. So I was like, can y'all go make sure my friend's in the car, my friend's in the car or whatever. And they was just like, he's unconscious. And so now I'm just really bawling because I'm like, oh my mm -hmm. God, like unconscious. Like at least I'm up. Yeah. You know, you hear unconscious. That's just like, he's not breathing. Like, yeah. so I'm just screaming at this point for him. And um, they ended up putting him on the uh, on emergency thing as, as well as I. And he went on and has, he had to get staples like on on one side of his head because mm -hmm. the car hit his side, the passenger side, mm -hmm. uh, impacted his side. It hit my side. My side looked brand new, but um, yeah. So he ended up having to get staples in his head, but he was fine the next day. He walked up. He walked up and, and came and saw me and gave me a card and mm -hmm. you know all that all that good stuff. But no, nah, he was good and and he needed to be because he had some big responsibilities coming up at that time. So mm -hmm. God knew that he didn't. Uh, this wasn't for him. Yeah. This was it was for me. Okay. So he's good. He's really good now. That's good. That's good. Do y'all still talk? We do not still talk. Mm -hmm. We keep in touch like every now and then. Like he'll say hey or I see something, I'll say hey or whatever. Okay. But you know, he has his own family and kids mm -hmm. and stuff. Okay. But like I feel like we all we have like a connection, you know, spiritually, just because we mm -hmm. went through that together. Exactly. We, we said that once or twice, but mm -hmm. no, nah, we don't really just talk like that. But we okay. we keep in touch. Okay. Say no more. You good. You good. Okay. So the moment that you get up in the hospital, from the time that you get into a wheelchair and start like OT and PT, how long is that? Uh. So. You said how long before I actually go to like rehab from the hospital? Mm. Yeah. Oh, what you asked me? Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, let me ask you something different. Okay, so the moment that you get up from the time you first get into like a wheelchair, how long is that? The first time I ever got in a wheelchair mm -hmm. was at rehab. At rehab? No. Okay. It was at the hospital. It, it was at the hospital. So it probably like two weeks after my incident. Okay. Like I was in weeks? ICU for like a week. I was like, mm -hmm. I was in ICU for like a week and a half. And okay. then they transferred me to like a regular room for a week. And mm -hmm. then during that little week, they were rolling me around mm -hmm. um, in a wheelchair. Okay. But. How was your. I was how, was, how was your ICU experience? I see it was horrible. My hospital experience was horrible. I didn't eat for two weeks. I didn't eat nothing. Like, they would have to, like, force me to try to eat, like, an insure mm -hmm. or whatever the case. So I ended up losing, like, 30 pounds within that two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I was throwing up excessively. Mm -hmm. I was just very, very sick. I couldn't keep anything down, even when I did try to eat. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't keep anything down. It was just, it was just a sickly, sickly two yeah. weeks and very, very painful, like, very mm -hmm. painful to sleep, to turn around, to mm -hmm. to sit up was like, man, I used to get so mad at them nurses for making me sit up. <laughs> yep. Yeah, trust but, me. My um, nurses hated me. Yeah, that, that whole two weeks was, yeah. even even into the, my rehab, like, it was still, I was still sick and throwing up and, you know, mm -hmm. in pain. Yeah. For okay. like a week into rehab. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see me? Me, I couldn't, they fed me, but I was getting fed through like a a, a tube that was in my mm -hmm. nose. But I know that, yeah, I know that was, I, that was in for like three months, three weeks, but I couldn't drink anything the whole time. It was like, man, I was mm -hmm. so thirsty. My, my lips were so chapped. My throat was dry. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, man. It, but like, I couldn't eat anything for a while. And then once I did, I started to try to eat fruits. But like you said, I couldn't keep anything down. And I'm telling you that mm. I lost like literally like a hundred pounds. And like, when I tell you, I, yeah. I, like I didn't eat right for like two years. I didn't eat right for like two years. Like it was, it was crazy. And the only thing that helped me get my appetite back. Cause I felt like I didn't even have an appetite for two years. Like for like, like it was so much food that I went through that, that my, that my family brought me, that my girl brought me, everybody was just buying me food, but 
I would never eat it. And if I did, I would right. automatically just throw it up. And like yeah. the, the, the only thing that helped me get better was weed. The only thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And that's crazy because at the time, at the time I didn't smoke because I was in the military. I was in the Air Force. And the doctor had came in and the doctor was like, look, I'm going to prescribe you some THC. It's a, but it's THC in a pill form. This in 2012. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. he gave me that and that, it helped a little bit, but you know, once I got back and I moved and I went back to Atlanta, of course, they weren't legal there at the time. But I, I started, right, right, yeah. But then at that time, I started smoking, and little bit by little bit, that's what really helped me get. You know, like mm-hmm. it helped me sleep. Your appetite, it helped, yeah. It, it, it helped me my appetite. It helped me sleep. It helped me with you know, like anxiety, just all the things that I was going through. Marijuana really helped me with it, and it really became one of those things I was like very passionate about. And I ended up creating a YouTube channel that, it, it, look, I, I did really good on it, but then she they ended up deleting it in like 2017. But that's, <laughs> that's another story. That's another story, though. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, so you said you went to rehab like two weeks later. Was rehab in a different location than the hospital? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I went to, okay. um, I went to like, I went to hospital at like Methodist, and I went to rehab at a Baylor. Okay. Okay, because yeah. mine's the rehab that I did, the PT and the OT that I did, they was they was at the hospital, they were just on a different floor. So yeah. I did so so I was in the ICU. If I would have went to Baylor, mm-hmm. then I would have been able to do the in house. You okay. know, I would have been doing doing work there, but mm-hmm. I guess Methodist at that time like was a was had a um, doctor on call for mm-hmm. more of what I needed to be done. Okay. So that's what mm-hmm. Okay. How was your PT and OT experience? Was it was it good? Was it bad? Did they hate you? Cause shit, <laughs> they hated me. <laughs> they hated me. No, they love me. They mm-hmm. love me. Like everybody, pretty much loves me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it's not like a um like an arrogant thing or anything like that, but just like I feel like I have like this spirit that's just always trying to. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Just always trying to. See People the light just gravitate the towards you. Even who? People just gravitate towards you. That's it. Yeah, people just gravitate mm-hmm. toward me, and like, of course, I had like experiences while I was in there, like you know, mm-hmm. with certain nurses. Yeah. But my the ones that I you know had on a consistent basis, like mm-hmm. yeah, they know me by name. I'm pretty sure they probably still remember me. I look like they they saved man. My then people up there like really changed my whole life for real Mm -hmm. because if it wasn't for them i don't know like i don't know where i would be seriously exactly exactly and no for real that's that's one thing that really i would say it it took me a while to really understand because i ain't gonna lie i I, I was was probably just an asshole to them at first but i feel like that like you know like they was just doing like some slick stuff and it was just like little things that they wouldn't tell me or just like i don't know just like little things that they did that Mm -hmm. i don't know it just I would say probably just kind of pissed me off, but you know, but I, I'm, yeah. very, I'm, My very, I'm very, I'm very grateful. At the hospital. Mm-hmm. Like every day. So yeah. it was like, it was only little moments in which I had to kind of like fight for myself or, you know, make sure that things mm-hmm. were getting done and which they should have be getting done in the manner in, you know in, in which they should have but mm-hmm. my mom and my dad they they, they was there and my and my godmom she was there a lot so if i ever had an issue i was yeah. in that to them because mm-hmm. for me to get involved would not have been it wouldn't have, I, mm-mm. at that time mm-hmm. mm-mm, they wouldn't have been I, they probably would kick me out the hospital oh trust me <laughs> i thought they was about to kick me out but it's just i believe mm-hmm. i believe a lot of our experiences is just a lot of people can't really relate to my experience because I was in the military. So that Yeah, whole, that's so, a different type of mental yeah, state that yeah. you bring into the table. Exactly, because in reality, they they still own you. So they got they gotta say so over everything before your parents do. So it was so so that's where Oh yeah, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. So it's just a lot of the things that a lot of things that really had to be said had to go really kind of go through them. So it was a lot of just 
politics that was going on. And I would really say that that's where a lot of my frustration probably came from too, was the fact that I had to deal with that. I had to deal with like a lot of higher ups and stuff like Ooh, that. So, oh, oh yeah, it was, it was like that. It was like that. Trust me, it, it was that bad. I couldn't have imagined it. <laughs> yeah, it was that bad. So, but look, we got through it. <laughs> we got through it, and hey, look, we here yeah. right now. So, mm-hmm. okay, All right, <laughs> okay. So, do you feel like? Because I know you said that the PT and OT changed your life. Do you feel like that you learned enough to really just help you get by, or do you feel like you learned a lot? Learned everything. I haven't been to rehab since. For real? Ooh, okay. Okay, you see that that's, I haven't, that's not like, the that's a story for a lot of people. Like I had I went to rehab for that six weeks. Mm-hmm. And you know, for me, everything turns into a competition. Like, not a competition, but no, nah, a competition. Like You competitive, that's it. That's it. And, and whether or not that be, like, against somebody or just self versus self for me, mm-hmm. like, you're not going to let this take over you, like, especially yeah. physically. Like, okay, my mm-hmm. I'm going to work on my mental, too. You know what I'm saying? But, like, mm-hmm. while we here right now, we gonna, I'm going I'm to I'm 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 definitely learn everything. But mm-hmm. I didn't even understand what everything even was. Yeah. But just 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 being present in every moment and putting like my mm-hmm. all into it for real. Yeah. You know, even you know, not kind of because it seems so mediocre. You mm-hmm. know, going back and forth and doing that until you get home and it's like, oh, okay, I, yeah. I needed to know that skill. Like exactly. So yeah, um, it taught me everything. I had like a, a at home PT person mm-hmm. for like. Mm, two, I think she came like two or three times to my home. Okay. And then after that, after that, I was gone. I was out the house. Mm-hmm. I was, I was, I, I had left. Oh, 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 so you, you moved out your parents' house or what? Like, uh, 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 like what you mean yeah, by that? Yeah, I had, you I had moved. Cause mind, cause mind you, remember, remember I, I only came home for the summer. I was supposed to be back in mm-hmm. PV. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So... When I came when I came home June 15th, got in my accident, mm-hmm. stayed home that semester, that fall semester through that December, mm-hmm. and by January the sixth, I was back at PV. Oh, living on damn. my own. Damn. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. So it, it, I, I wasn't playing no games. Like, I was not playing no games. Like I was driving. I had had just I was driving. Mm. The only thing is, uh, they hadn't put my hand controls on my car yet. But mm-hmm. I had already took the class before I left. Like I was, I was student and booty. Oh, I had brought my car down to PG. That's like it was, yeah. And you wanna know but what? That's, that's 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 what people need to hear. Not only women, but men as well. All right, because it took like from the time I got to the hospital to the time that I, that I actually moved out on my own was about like two and a half years. And for and and you saying it, it probably took you like less than six months. So, so trust June me. and I moved back in January. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So 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 people definitely need to hear that. Honestly, I need to hear that because, ooh, that that's very inspirational for real, for real. Like that's dope. That's dope. I commend you on that. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> that's what's up. Okay. Man, thanks God. I so I hear that so much, and it's like I don't know. I didn't even accept it. Maybe because it's like it's so me. Or mm-hmm. maybe I just need to give myself more credit. I don't know. You do. You, li- listen, you do. And I'm telling you, it's probably going to hit a little bit harder from a, from somebody in a wheelchair telling you that than just a regular person. But like, I, that's that's very inspirational to hear that you was already back. Look, six months, six months, you already living on your own. That's that's crazy. That's that's dope. That's dope. For real, for real. For real, for real. I'm, I'm telling you, more, more people need to hear that. More people need to hear that. You can do it. You can literally yeah. whatever you want to do. <laughs> exactly. Look, look, it's a mindset thing. It's a mindset thing. It, right? And and at that time, honestly, my mindset wasn't even all the way. Like I was just so mm-hmm. ready to get back out of the, my mama house, like and resume yeah. my lifestyle. Like yeah. I had learned everything physical, you know. Mm-hmm. So you know, it just made sense. But now nah, the mentality okay. it came a little after. Okay. Okay. Uh, now. How was your mental health at that time? All I like, well, like after the hospital, I came home. I was depressed the whole okay. time. Like I was in the dark. I, I stayed mm-hmm. in the dark. 
I didn't go outside. Like my sister, she would come and pick me up and just make me get out the house and you mm-hmm. know just just try to get me back doing those things yeah. and. But I just didn't want to do it. I was embarrassed. I did not like the wheelchair. I was not mm-hmm. messing with the legs, going every which way. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I was, I was, I was already not secure in the woman that I was yeah. pre-accident. Mm-hmm. So then you add that on top of it. Now it's just like the insecurities are out of there, yeah. <laughs> you know. And mm-hmm. yeah, it just, it was a dark, it was a dark place. It was, mm-hmm. it was a dark place. I was going through a, a breakup with my ex of. Mm-hmm what five years at the time mm-hmm. so that's playing with my mental like oh you don't want to be with me no more because i'm in a wheelchair like mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like it just it's just so much was going on at that time that i just yeah i just yeah I was do, at, I, do, yeah. do you feel like he broke up with you because of the wheelchair okay so let me let me just say this we ain't never really just broke up like Obviously, we're not together no more, mm-hmm. but, like, we never, like, had a conversation to where it was, like, we're not going to do this no more, you know? Okay. We never was, I think, I don't think we were ever able to just, like, you know, part ways or, or mm-hmm. even, you know how you say you want to part ways, but then it's like, I may want you in the end when I'm, you know? Mm-hmm. So, we, we never really said those words or whatever, so we never, um, I, I never really got that closure. We just stopped talking. Mm, okay. Like we just had stopped talking. Like pr- like prior to my accident, we weren't talking for like three weeks, four weeks. Mm-hmm. So after my accident, mm-hmm. it just kind of you know yeah. elongated, and I think he yeah. hit me up like some weeks later or something. I came and visited some weeks later, but okay, yeah, it was crazy. Okay, now now I know you said that you moved on your own. How was it living on your own? Hmm. Was it tough? Was it, it was. Did, did you realize it was some things that you just couldn't do, or how was it when you first when you first got there? Okay, so when I first that you moved down own? there. Okay, so when I say on my own, like I'm on my own, like nobody's taking care of me. But my cousin okay. Jazz, we the same age, so we okay. had been going to we had been roommates at PV, mm-hmm. you know, since freshman year. Okay. So when I went back, we had an apartment at this time, a two bedroom apartment, mm-hmm. and but my cousin. She would be there if I was to like fall off a bridge, you yeah. know. She would be there, mm-hmm. but she didn't like. She didn't take care of me because she didn't need to. Like I didn't like mm-hmm. she, but she, but what she would do, she would take me to class and she would roll me to class and mm-hmm. she would roll me to the car. Like she did, she definitely played her role in that aspect because like just traveling around a campus. Yeah, that's a walking campus. Literally, they call mm-hmm. it PV a walking campus because it's, you know, it's it's applicable. To not mm-hmm. have to drive, but not necessarily wheelchair applicable. Okay, Trust me, <laughs> so so it was it was different. Um, living on my own, going to a a big unit like a pretty big university, mm-hmm. and not re- and not having a, a caregiver, like not having somebody that's there to help you. You mm-hmm. know, I was by myself. Like my best friend at the time, we're, we're not um, friends anymore, but. My best friend at the time lived right next door. And like I said, they would help out with like rides. Like the main thing that mm-hmm. I needed was like a ride into my car okay. camp. And so that was the main thing that I um that I that I needed assistance with. But everything else, like I said, I had already mastered like mm-hmm. getting in and out of a shower or mm-hmm. you know, just everything else was just it was pretty normal. It was just in a wheelchair. Okay. Like even my apartment, I didn't have like a like wheelchair accessible apartments. Like I st- I still don't mm. live in a wheelchair accessible apartment. I mm. just go, you know. Okay. I figured out. You find a way. You find a way. Literally, like I'm a, okay. I'm always gonna find a way. <laughs> exactly, and that that's one thing that a lot of people in wheelchairs like. You end up figuring out is that you will eventually find a way. And that's how I yeah, do. You want to live? That's how I do everything. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Look, if you want to live, you want to have fun. Look, you want to do all that shit. Like, trust me. Right. You gotta find a way. It don't stop. Like, it don't stop. It don't, no, it don't. stop. It don't. It don't. It, it don't. Like, cause I, cause, cause, uh, me and my wife, we went to Columbia, cause my boys, they be doing, um, they be doing like parties out there and stuff like that. 
Columbia ain't ain't nowhere near handicap accessible. But like I tell people, yeah. everybody asks me, yo, how you did it? How you did it? And we found a way, you know. And then the people out there, right? You just yeah. do it, literally. Exactly. You just do it. Exactly. And then and then you know sometimes you got to kind of let you know you got to kind of put your pride and your ego aside. And you know, I look. It was sometime my it. it was sometime my boys had to help me. That's it, it right it, there. The exactly. Pride, that's it right there. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, once like, you let that go, mm-hmm. it's, it's much easier. Exactly. 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 And that and that's what I tell people because you know I still go through instances where I don't ask people. Oh, yeah. I don't, you know I don't really ask people for help, but it gets to a point where look, it, look, if you're gonna do this, if you're gonna get on that boat and you're gonna go to that other island, look. They gonna have to pick you up and you know what I mean like bring you over there. So I right, bet pick me up and bring me over there. Let's right, get it. Exactly. let's get it. it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I, it's crazy because I was just telling my friend that like I didn't my ego I didn't do that all the way away because if mm-hmm. I want to go somewhere I'm going. Like exactly, if yeah. I want to be there I'm gonna be there. If I want if it's upstairs I'm gonna go upstairs. Like mm-hmm. y'all gonna pick me up like a princess or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And. I'm gonna be. In, I'm just gonna do. Like I'm. I'm gonna do it all. Like, <laughs> that's what's and up. I'm. I'm not gonna act like that's been my mentality because mm-hmm. it hasn't. But I've grown to it, and it ain't no going back. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, you said that you was. Are you single at the moment, or you dating, or? I am single. I am okay. single, happily single. Okay. Full, whole, and single as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so tell us what what's a dating scene like. Dating? Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, I am... I don't want to be going on dates, like... Okay. Mm-mm. Okay. Like, I went oh. on a date with this one guy. hmm And it was cool, but I'm real, real, real particular. Okay. Like, and not like in a picky sense, but now you're... Like you, you know, you just know exactly what you want, and yeah, exactly when it when it hasn't presented itself to you, I'm mm-hmm. not gonna play around. Like I, I want to be courted. I'm not in here to date, really. Okay, I've, I've dated, I've done all that. Yeah. I found myself. I know who I want. I know the type of man that I want in my space. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're not presenting that type of energy as a guy fearing man, I'm not gonna. It don't. It does not attract me at all. Okay, I'd have been through. Much more than the average, so mm-hmm. all that just normal stuff. Okay, nah. <laughs> and you wanna know what? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. That's what's up. Okay, so you know, just hearing your story and everything, because before me and you got on this, you know, I read your blog. All right, and your blog, your blog pretty much laid out everything that you told me in this interview, and like I told you. You made my wife cry, so you know that's my heart right there. My mm-hmm. blog is my heart, literally. That's what's up. So, what's your blog called? It's called the Unveil. Okay. It's, the, it's called the Unveil. It's pretty much just like revealing everything and, and every experience that mm-hmm. kind of led me up until to these points, and, and mm-hmm. then just adding to that. Okay. Okay. Because I can see you very open on the blog. Because I. I- you good? You good? Go. What's up? Nah, nah, nah. I want you to say what you was going to say first. I was going to say that I could tell that you go into detail because you did say on the on the blog as well about the pavement being high. So I had already knew that prior to you even saying that because it's something that you revealed in your uh, blog. So I could tell that you kind of go into yeah. detail. Now, I didn't get into all the other stuff, but I did read that and I definitely look forward to going on to your blog and reading everything so you can tell us some more about your blog like what you got going on in your life like you know, like share and comment on the unveil like y'all okay go i promise you it's a good, it's a good read like yeah. and it's not even just a good read it's it's like it's like it's like it's necessary mm-hmm. almost like i don't i don't just talk just to talk and mm-hmm. and i'm not you know saying that you can't just talk just to talk this mm-hmm. anybody can do whatever they want to do but for me like typically when i speak it's something that the God, like that God, has put on my heart to say. Like I okay. feel like y'all need to hear this. Y'all okay. need to, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and I try to put it in a way that's more understandable to people like myself that wasn't yeah. always on the right path, you mm-hmm. know. So I done been, I done lived both worlds, up down, mm-hmm. 
you know what I'm saying? I hopped off the porch early doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, you know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I just feel like people, people, people can relate to me. You know, mm-hmm. people okay. can relate to me, and they're more open to share share their stories with me because. I put mm-hmm. I put myself out there so that people can feel comfortable with you know giving me the same. Exactly, exactly, and you know what I feel the same way, and and that was one thing that I didn't really realize because I felt like I felt like that. All right, I'm gonna be honest. I I was kind of a cocky person before I got in a wheelchair. All right, I was it, it, like, it's just really because I was just mo- oh. like everything I did, everything I felt like I did, I felt like I was successful at. It was. You know, like it was in school. Now I ain't gonna lie; I really want the best of school. I, I was really bad in school. Like I was, like all the teachers hated me. I, like that's how bad I was. You know, but everything, everything I put my mind to, I, I did. All right, and mm-hmm. and like I tell people all the time, I felt like that God really just needed to sit me down. Like, like He sat me down for a reason because I felt like that the path I was going on, I probably would have got kicked out of the military. Just like you know, like I just, I just wasn't moving right. And I feel like now I got a new purpose in life and it really just, it changed my whole outlook on a lot of things, you know? And like, yeah, I felt like, I felt like a lot of it was like really embarrassing, but I felt like I needed that. You know, I needed it to put me in a position yeah. to where I'm at right now. And I feel like that one thing I didn't understand was people will always try to talk to me about their stories and, you know, like, like just really open up to me. And like, for the longest time, I really hated it. Like I really just didn't like it because yeah. I'm like, yo, why are you trying to, you know, what I mean, like talk to me like, like, like this ain't that, you, you know, and but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and it really took me a while to, you know, really realize that, you know, like I gotta, like I'm putting myself out there, so you know, in reality, people, people might feel more comfortable to want to go ahead and talk to me than you know talk to their family members or the next person because they feel like that, damn, this guy can really relate with what I'm going through. So, you know, it took right. it took me a while to really realize that. And once I did, I started writing people back in the DMs. I, you know, I, I I really started to try to help people out because I opened up a little more. Exactly. Exactly. Because I know what they what not having that information could be like for somebody in our position. Not having the information really could really be detrimental to your health. Because it's just there's mm-hmm. a lot of the things that you feel like that as a wheelchair user you should know, but a lot of people don't know. You know? Like Oh, I ain't gonna lie. I'm one of them ones. Like, mm-hmm. I people ask me like, "What's your level of injury?" And I could go back from T11, T12 because I, I just have not educated myself on nothing. Like me, me. Either. I don't know. Like I just, I just got out the wheelchair and just got back to life. Like mm-hmm. you know, I, I haven't sat down. I, I ain't even looked at no X-ray yet. Like mm-hmm. I don't even know what's going on in my back. Like yeah, me, I, I don't you know, know. me I either. Me like, either. Like, but I'm, but honestly, I don't see myself ever doing that. Like maybe for my health, yeah, to mm-hmm. kind of just know more of how the, you know, my body is functioning. But just like some people be like, you know, just really going deep into that, yeah. and it's, that, that's for them. You know, everybody's called for something mm-hmm. different. But I don't, I don't be, I don't be on it too much. Like mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know. Like I feel you, all I, feel I know you. is I sit down and you stand up. That's all I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all I know is I can't move from the belly button on down. That's it. That's all I know. You feel me? Like, you know what I mean? I'm T10, T11. I'm T10, T11. I can't really tell you what vertebrae is which, what happened. All I know is, look, I'm T10, T11. I really can't get into detail about stuff. I'm a complete. That's it. All right. I just found out that recently, but that's only because my wife asked a couple questions. So I'm T10, T11 complete. So I don't have any spasms or anything. So it is what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you complete or are you incomplete? Man, you gotta yeah. ask that question. Hmm? I think I, I don't know because it's like when I first was in the hospital, they said it was one thing, and mm-hmm. then when I went back, I could feel okay, like because at first I couldn't feel okay, but then and then it started going down. Like at first, mm-hmm. it was like I couldn't feel my hips, you mm-hmm. know, my hip from my hips down, okay, but now it's like. I can feel like I'm touching my leg. I can't, I can mm-hmm. feel it, but it's just, it's the difference. That's what it mm-hmm. is. It's like a difference. I can feel like the texture okay. here that I'm feeling. I feel mm-hmm. pressure here, okay. not necessarily texture. Here. Yeah. Okay. But I, um, I feel all the way down to like my, to like my feet. For real? So. Okay. Okay. So you probably incomplete then. You probably incomplete. Do you get spasms? 
What, what is the spasm like when your leg be moving? Yeah, like shaking. I'm guessing, like like shaking and burning. Cause I don't get them, so I really can't. Oh, I, I, I really can't say too much about it. But I mean, Mm-mm. I don't know. I haven't had that. Okay, okay. And look, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I ain't got to go through it. Cause I hear is 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 painful. I hear, and... I hear some. Ba- I hear some bad stories, and no. I'm just like. Oh my God! I haven't went to the hospital since I've been at the hospital. Like, mm-hmm. you know, or not for that reason. Like, yeah. I had other stuff going on for other reasons that mm-hmm. I was, you know, controlling. But I just be like, dang, I, I be mm-hmm. feeling sad. Yeah, I know. Trust me, <laughs> me too, me too. So, do, do you have anything that you're working on now? I got a lot I'm working on. Let us know. Let us know. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to see. Like, should I even put? the names out there because like having I legalized one of my names which is God Girl University okay and that is my uh non-profit okay that I am going to present to the public um I think this coming May I graduated in May my birthday's in May mm-hmm. um my kids will be on spring break in May so I'll be coming down off of you know to have all that and I'll mm-hmm. be able to go full throttle on my own business my own non-profit okay and everything that the Lord has been putting on me so I got the God Girl University going, mm-hmm. and y'all just stay tuned for that because that's gonna be world changing. Like every girl in the U.S., America, whomever needs needs to be on that. Okay. Then I'm also co- uh, branding myself, um, which will be tied to God Girls University, mm-hmm. and. I'm gonna just put it out there because you know whatever's for you is for you. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, so. God Girls University I have is my nonprofit. Then mm-hmm. I'm the God Girl Guru. Okay. So that's more of like where my psychology and spiritual coaching will come into place. Because mm-hmm. I graduated, like I said, in May with my psychology degree okay. from UNT Dallas. Oh, okay. And so the God Girl Guru, you know, page account will be more of my business, my mm-hmm. brand. Um, and we just teaching all things that you need to know before doing life. Uh, obviously, we've probably already done Half mm-hmm. of life, or more than we should have, but yeah. we got to break the generational. We got to break the cycle somewhere. So yeah, exactly. you know it's never too late, and and that's kind of what God Girl University and God Girl Guru um, is gonna be presented to the public, and then also having that backing of my mm-hmm. psychology degree to understand the different types of people that I'm gonna encounter mm-hmm. and how to kind of navigate through understanding those mentalities that are outside of my own ideologies. Okay. You know, so we can bring it all together. Okay. Okay. It's all going to come back full circle. Trust me. It's all going to gel together. It's Look, all watch. Come back full circle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay. Now, if you don't mind me asking, how'd you get on world star? So boom, I don't know how I came across being run or I think that's his name on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but somehow we came across each other and um, I end up saying something to him or he ended up saying something to me and like he called me quick like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying and hey I look like, okay, he called me quick too he called me quick too he called me hey he like, cool as hell though I can already tell <laughs> I can already tell just by his energy like this is what he do you know yep, what I'm saying yep. and so we got on the phone we got on the phone, mind you. At this time, I don't. I'm not. On, I'm not active on TikTok. I think I have like a hundred mm-hmm. followers on TikTok at this time. Okay. And this is a week and a half ago, as of today. Mm-hmm. So, I get on. Uh, we chopping it up. Like he called me. Like I said. Like we talking. Like we been knowing each other forever. Mm-hmm. And he just telling me and encouraging me in all these different ways. And I just feel like God is speaking to me through him because he's saying things in which I already know. You know what I'm saying? But he's just confirming it. Like, yeah. okay, cool. Like, okay, I should. I mean, it just really giving me that encouragement as a person that's mm-hmm. in a wheelchair that kind of simulars the type of, you know, type of, mm-hmm. like, you know, just all that. So mm-hmm. it was it, it was definitely like an eye-opener. Like, within that 10-minute conversation, like, I got the going on my phone. I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to get active on TikTok. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get, like, you know, I'm just going to accept the lifestyle because yep. I feel like before that conversation, I had accepted the wheelchair, but not... Not, not really, cause like I don't, I never really like people saying paraplegic and all mm-hmm. that, like disabled and all that. Like it just, mm-hmm. like all them words used to just do something to me. So it was just like when he told me that, it just kind of made me like just, it is what it is. Like 
you know, this this happening for your good, which you know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, why not embrace it to the fullest to see, you know, what God really got for you? Yeah. So, like I said, I we had the conversation with him, got off the phone with him, posted a video on TikTok of a um of some pictures that I had um this past summer mm-hmm. or whatever. Mind you, because I take pictures all the time. So I just mm-hmm. put that together quick. And I posted on my TikTok and this guy actually took it off of my TikTok mm-hmm. and posted it on his Facebook and he mm-hmm. um captioned it, Baby, I don't see no wheelchair. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. So it like went crazy on Facebook. Like I had got like three hundred K repost shares mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be. And so when that happened, I was just like, okay, God, you I've been asking you, I want I wanna build my platform so that when I mm-hmm. do speak, I got I'm um, somebody listening, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like my followers on Facebook started going up. Like, mm-hmm. just everything went up. Like I'm like four thousand on TikTok, and I was like a hundred last week or two weeks ago, or whatever. Okay. Like everything is just going up. I'm getting I'm getting connected with different people that's mm-hmm. you know going to be conducive to my brand, and we can yeah. swap. You know, just everything. Exactly, like. exactly. Hey, look, that's how I found you. You want to live here. That's how I found you. I found you on World so, Star, you know, and oh yeah, then World Star and people. Mm-hmm. I got me on YouTube. They YouTube pages, and it's just yeah. like I ain't even have not did not one thing yet at all. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> so, look, and like yeah. you said, uh, you know, for the longest time, I felt like I kind of rebelled against the whole wheelchair thing because I feel like, like I don't know, I like it too. was just it was just a bad stigma to it. Like it was just you know, like like for me what? personally. Like for me, it was just like uh, not me too. You know, yeah, exactly. And you know, uh, if you remember, I told you I was kind of big in the weed space. Like I was a weed tuber back in the day, so I was on YouTube. I, I was doing like you know, like funny videos on weed. And, you know, companies would send me in, you know, weed and stuff like that. And I would do like reviews for like you know different brands and like all like all that type of stuff. So I was trying to get on the on World Star for so long because. Man, like I had so many viral videos on there, and I was trying to get on World Star for so long, never worked out. But the moment I do a video with this company called Barkoff, which is now Truly TV, I do, I do, I do an interview with them, and they kind of like pretty much caught me off guard with the interview, and they really kind of made it something that they didn't say that they was gonna do, but they made it about my wheelchair. And once they did, that shit just blew up, and it, it, look, it was out of there. Yeah. <laughs> That's was what that? I mean, you know, exactly. you might as well accept it. You're in a wheelchair, the yeah. people want to see what's going on. Like, they, they they really do. Why not? They, they you would do it any other time. Mm-hmm. Like, you know? They really do. And I'm telling you, a lot of the time, too, is people really don't see people like me and you in a wheelchair. You know, a lot of people when they think wheelchair, right. they think old people. You know what I mean? Like they don't really think right. they don't really think me and you. They don't, you know, like it's right. just it old just, car, old it, house, like, exactly, like, and it's up to us to really put it out there, you know. And yeah, I know you said that you were taking pictures and put them out there for me. Like I still don't even like posting the pictures in my wheelchair, but I do it because I know you really? know. Yeah, oh, I no, don't. I'm way past that. That's <laughs> okay. what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna post a picture. Okay, I I'm bet. Look, I'm I, on it. Then when I finally like really got over it, I deleted mm-hmm. all the pictures of me like standing up and all yeah. that stuff. So like yeah, I that's one thing like I know I look good like mm-hmm. you know obviously it's way bigger than that but yeah, like I yeah. ain't never had like that type of okay like nah, <laughs> nah. stay posting the pic nah but that's what's up that's what's up do you have any questions for me? No, we kind of been having like a, a two way combo like mm-hmm. I feel like you know all right well look if you, look if you ever got yeah. any questions hit me up if you got any questions on the YouTube thing hit me up you know. My yes, line, my I line always open. YouTube, because I want to start my own YouTube and podcast. Okay, okay. Hey, look, just hit me up. I'm here. I ain't doing nothing. You know, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I ain't, I ain't really doing nothing. You said you were driving. You said you're doing everything. So it sounds like everything is, you know, going good for you. And that's what I like to see. So congrats on everything moving forward. And look, I look forward to seeing you doing big things. So that's what's up. Well, thank you for having me, and I appreciate that. I appreciate you coming on, sharing your story. Like I said, look, it, look, it was very powerful and very inspirational, and and it's something that a lot of people is gonna gain a lot of inspiration from because just to even know that you know six months after you becoming paralyzed, you already living on your own, like that's 
that's very inspirational for people out there and, and, and a lot more people need to hear that so i appreciate you coming on to the podcast thank you for real for real okay well thank you again you have a great rest of your day